That's a good question. Why does Audi put their motors in front uh, of the front axle? Isn't that bad for handling and induces understeer? Yes, it does. Yes, and most most cars do. Most engines do. Just as uh, as the 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 fundamental nature that uh, the transmission is behind the engine, and then the drive axles are typically out of the transmission. Yeah, it's, it's all just a, a driveline packaging yeah. uh, consideration because, yeah, with, with Audi and their, their predominantly all-wheel drive line, lineup, um, they're designed from the get-go to have front axles driven from a transmission up front. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, to do that, it's, it's very hard to put that in line with the motor. Yeah, this is the advantage, uh, you know, classic advantage of a rear-wheel drive car is you don't have any drive axles in the front to worry about. So you can, you can push the front wheels forward in some some cases, practically in front of the engine, yeah. and and you essentially have a mid-engine car, and then all the power is driven through the rear wheels. The, you know that creates its own set of compromises you have to accept. Um, Rear-wheel drive cars uh, typically do not put their power down very well; can be very unstable, or um, you know offer irregular handling for the average driver. <clears throat> um, certainly, you go into a corner and. You, give it some throttle and the car can easily spin that just wouldn't it's really hard to do in a front wheel drive or all wheel drive car um so um what we've seen though is audi make efforts yes. to improve that and so start, starting in b was it b9 B8. was it b8 mm -hmm. okay. yeah that's where the split fly was. I, know, I know b9 was um oh yeah that's right um so you'll, you'll see on a starting in a b8 generation and, and forward the flywheel actually sits on a pedestal, so it still bolts to the crankshaft, but imagine almost like a wine glass uh, with the flywheel sitting on top of it. And then th that allows Audi to run the axles out of the front of the transmission flange. So it's still in the transmission, but they've now moved um, at, you know, the whole engine and transmission back like six to eight inches um, from where it used to be. So that already helps um, the, uh, the the weight distribution. Another thing you see is um, Audi uh, putting um, this, a lot of the engines longitudinally, especially in, you know, for example, the MQB platform. Transverse, me. Uh, sorry, transverse versus longitudinal, and so that moves the engine on, from longitudinal where it's sitting out to moving it back, and so that that changes the whole weight balance um, more back onto the front axle. None of these are going to help the car feel as balanced as, say, a rear-wheel drive sports car, like maybe a classic BMW. But um, the advantages of Quattro are, are very big, and so it is a it is a trade-off uh, that you make. Um, also, with a lot of the suspension tuning modifications like what we do, you can overcome a lot of that, and the cars do actually turn and feel very sporty, um, have very nice handling characteristics. So... Um, so yeah, but you know, Audi's never been been out to be the, the ultimate sports car. Um, certainly not stock, um, but we get them a lot closer there, and there's a lot of fun, positive things about Audi.